we would like today to welcome the Honorable Dan McPhee. Thank you. Well, you could sit at the... Oh, okay. yep. Oh, thank you for that, Stefan. It's always dangerous to give a politician a time of three minutes. They might actually take liberties, you as you see in the House of Commons. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. I want to thank the organizers for what I think is a very crucial issue uh, confronting our country and, in fact, uh, around the world. Uh, it's awfully nice not to have to discuss issues of gasoline or uh, the plight of Canadians abroad and to shift to something I think that affects all Canadians. And so uh, I'm pleased to be here as a panelist uh, to hear and to learn uh, and to discuss uh, what I think are emerging issues uh, that are very much at the forefront of public policy and uh, deliberations in Ottawa. Uh, as Stefan has been kind enough to point out, I am the vice chair of the industry committee, have been for several years. Uh, uh, I send greetings on behalf of my chair, uh, the, uh, James Rajat, who is chair of the industry committee. Uh, this committee has been very, uh, very, uh, very deliberate in its uh, views on IP, uh, on piracy and on counterfeiting. We have had uh, not one but two reports uh, with recommendations contained in the need for the Canadian government to proceed these, uh, on, on these areas. Uh, these uh, decisions, these recommendations were made unanimously. I am also wearing the other hat of uh, co-chair of the IP committee, which we've set up in Ottawa, a caucus uh, of all parties included, and uh, uh, its purpose is really to hear from and to listen to experts, not just domestically but internationally. And our concerns are really uh, focused on what I think are very subjective examples in our own riding. I became very interested in this issue when a company, uh, well known in my riding and uh, with international significance, succumbed to uh, uh, counterfeit. Uh, and uh, the ideas that they had put forward, the, uh, the novel ideas that they had uh, in fact engaged with with another country in China was in fact ripped off and they were eventually put under. But it wasn't just a company going under as a result of uh, what appears to be lawlessness in this area. This company happened to be known as Bailey Communications. Anybody who's from Ajax will know that the town itself was named after a very famous uh, battle in the Second World War, the Battle of the River Plate, and it was the first victory of the Allied forces. But more importantly, it was named after the first mayor of Ajax, who also happened to be the individual uh, who, uh, with working with uh, uh, a man called Intrepid, Stevenson, was able to use a technologically advanced uh, um, position of triangulation to find out where the Japanese fleet was after it attacked Pearl Harbor. Bailey Communications uh, was named after its owner, who uh, was uh, significant in, uh, in what was eventually to be a turning point in that battle in the Second World War uh, with respects to uh, uh, the battle in the Pacific, the Battle of Midway. Had it not been for Canadian technology in the 1940s, it's somewhat ironic that in the 1990s, in, the year, in, the, uh, in this new century, this company has succumbed to a far greater battle. And so I, uh, it takes no rhetoric to convince me as a member of parliament uh, of the need for us to, uh, to uh, proceed with legislation. I, uh, in the few minutes that I'm given here, hope that the Canadian government will heed the uh, requests, the recommendations, not only of our committee on two occasions, but also the Public Safety Committee, better coordination, better enforcement, and to recognize, I think, what most Canadians are recognizing is that our international reputation, the safety of Canadians, and the concern of all Canadians uh, will not be met with a status quo. Thank you for those, uh, that opportunity. He is passionate about the issue of copyright in Canada and has spoken to government committees, committees on the issue. EMI Music features a number of top performing Canadian artists such as Nickelback, Anne Murray, and Chaos. Please welcome Dean Cameron. Dean? Thank you, Stefan. Um, well, I'm here today to illustrate uh, part of what Dan was just saying. Much has changed in the music industry during the last five years, led by a decline in CD sales of close to 40% in Canada. Both major record labels and independent music labels have been adversely affected by this unprecedented decline. All artists and musicians have felt significant repercussions from dwindling sales, particularly new and emerging artists who have yet had the opportunity to develop other income streams such as ticket sales, merchandising and license income. Job losses within the general Canadian music industry workforce number in the thousands. For example, EMI Music Canada in 2002 had a staff of 218 and today we are 66 people. Five years ago, our artist roster numbered 25, and today we struggled to stay at 10 artists. Also, the notion of artist development, too, has somewhat faded. 
Labels cannot afford to stay with an artist for three albums until they break. On the positive side, despite some in the media preaching the opposite, during this decline period, the record industry has succeeded in reinventing a new strategy for itself where digital innovation is the key to the future. We are building a new business model, keyword model. But we need intellectual property and copyright law in Canada that keeps transforming that model into a new, healthy, and vibrant music industry, which fairly rewards its writers, artists, and their investors. This law will create a business framework that should attract new digital business entrepreneurs, which will create the ultimate success story, which is getting the Canadian consumer what they want at competitive pricing. Music products in every available configuration is our goal. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dean.